People often want to hunt for rare and allocated bourbon when they make their pilgrimage to Kentucky, but it might be the worst place in the world to hunt for allocated bourbons. But there are some whiskeys that you can only get in Kentucky. And if you want to find out what they are, then stick around. Okay, pretty girl, before we get started, we have yeah. to thank the patrons. We do. Um, so we do have a Patreon support page, and everyone whose names are on your screen right now are supporting this channel at the top three levels. Without their support, we wouldn't be able to produce this content for you at no charge. And so we thank you, patrons. And if you want to hear more about how to support this channel, we'll talk about it towards the end of the video. So before we get into this, we do need to go through some disclaimers. It's very difficult to source this information because there's been so many different SKUs that were Kentucky only that are now in wider distribution. Um, and so if I make a mistake, don't kill me. But even if I'm wrong on some of these about being distillery only or whatever, uh, I do believe that everything that I'm going to say is easier to find in Kentucky um, than it would be in your average location across the state. So uh, the information should still be relevant even if I put it in the wrong wrong category. Sure. Um, so first let's talk about the categories. Okay. So there are whiskeys that are readily available in Kentucky but may be hard to find in other places. Sure. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, there are whiskeys that are only sold in Kentucky by design. Okay. And then uh, there are distillery only releases. Yes. And so let's go for the ones first that are readily available in Kentucky, but not other places. Okay. Uh, what's the first one on the list? Um, the first one is Early Times Bottled in Bond. The yep. one liter is $23. And I happen to have one of those here. Um, <gasps> And so this is again one of those value whiskeys. Twenty-three dollars for a one liter that's bottled and bond, which means it's a hundred proof, is a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. um, what's the second one on the list? Um, J T S Brown. J T S Brown. That's what like I've never even heard of that. But so this is one of the ones that you know if somebody goes, hey, I'm going to Kentucky. Do you want me to pick you anything up? Oh. I say J T S Brown. Okay. Um, so that it, one's about eighteen dollars. Yeah, it's a it's a really inexpensive whiskey. Um, it's a Heaven Hill product. Um, it's it's well made. I feel like I should smell it. Yeah, it's it's Go nutty, ahead. so you may not love it. Yeah, I don't, I don't love it. But um, <laughs> it's a it's a solid, well made product at a really good price. Yeah. Uh, also bottled and bond. Um, so. You know, made to the highest quality standards uh, mm -hmm. for the category of whiskey. And those are two that you should pretty easily be able to find in Kentucky that may uh, be hard to find where you live. I, I've heard that JTS Brown has been released in Texas a couple of times, um, but it's not a regularly distributed product, so it's, it's a lot easier to find there in Kentucky. Okay. Um, so let's move into the only sold in Kentucky category. What's the first one on the list? Um, the Evan Williams. Evan Williams single, single barrel. barrel. Yeah, so uh, this one's in a slightly fancier package than most of okay. the Evan Williams bottles, uh, and it's waxed. Mm. It's a real pretty bottle. Um, I happen to not own one right now because I didn't get one the last time I went to Kentucky. <laughs> um, and they used to be in wider distribution. Sure. Uh, the first time I ever saw a bottle uh, was when we were with Cody and Alicia in, oh, in, in uh, Topeka. Topeka, Kansas. And I was looking in the cabinet at this mm -hmm. liquor store, and I was hoping to find something that I hadn't seen before, and I saw an Evan Williams single barrel. This was probably in 2015, maybe? Yeah. And so I was just getting started in the whiskey game, but I knew I would not seen that bottle before, and mm -hmm. it was $99. And so I, I opened up my phone, and I searched it, and it turned out that that was an outrageous mm -hmm overpriced bottle. Because it's normally like 30, 31, Yeah, right? it's like 31 bucks now. Yeah. And back then it was even less than that. And um, and so I ended up not buying it. But I, I did see one in Dallas once and I bought it just for funsies. Mm -hmm. And it was a solid, solid product. Um, but they have decided not to sell it everywhere. And now mm -hmm. you can only get it in Kentucky. Awesome. Uh, what's the next one? Heaven Hill Quality House. Now, this one is going to disappoint a lot of the OGs because <laughs> there used to be 
so there, there's been three versions of this. So there, there was the white label that was the six-year age stated, which they discontinued. Um, and and then a year later, they brought back an, a seven-year age stated that was like four times as expensive, right? Um, but I think Heaven Hill figured out that the liquid that they were selling in these really inexpensive bottles was worth a whole lot more money than they were selling it for. So they discontinued it, brought it back with a high one year higher age statement a year later hmm. and started to charge the higher price. Um, and for a while there was the green label that's the six year age stated. Mm -hmm. uh, but now they've switched back to the white label and it just says quality house and there is no age statement. But okay. it is only $13 for a one liter bottle. That's crazy. Uh, and that's something that you can only get in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. um, and so what's the next one that we have on the list? This one's a high dollar one. Ah, uh, the old Forester President's Choice. Yes. $180, is that? Yeah. Is that a thing? Uh, so, but they're single barrels. Okay. And so the, it's it's seven to 12 year old whiskey uh, that are single barrels. And this is mostly distillery only. If mm -hmm. you go to the, the Old Forester website, it says that it has limited distribution in Kentucky. So I put it in the Kentucky only category instead of the distillery release. Okay. But chances are, if you find one of these, it's going to be at the distillery. Uh, the good news is, is that when you go to the distillery, they have a bar and they have a flight board that you can purchase mm. and it has some of their limited releases. And uh, when we were there a few weeks ago, they had the president's choice mm. on a flight board with some of their other things. When and you so were there when I was there, there. yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, I wasn't there. Uh, I meant me and the viewers. <laughs> I know, but it's, you are not the it's only sad when I get, person when I that get I travel with. I mean, the patrons, they like to go places too. I know. Don't be forgetting the patrons. I'm not. I just couldn't go. Yeah, she couldn't go that time. Um, so that one's a little bit expensive, but it's a cool bottle to have. I'll say so. Uh, so what's next on the list? Um, Elijah Craig Grenade. Have I ever even heard of that? Oh! <gasps> Look how cute that is. It is so cute. Shut up. And so it is not called the Elijah Craig Grenade. No, but it, it looks is, like one. It is a whiskey barrel, but it is affectionately referred to as an Elijah Craig Grenade by whiskey enthusiast. $60 at the distillery? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's 125 proof Elijah Craig, um, and it is a... Um, uh, I think it's a 375 bottle. I feel like that is marketed just for me. I will buy anything cute at the distillery. <laughs> so, uh, so, but this one is distillery only. Yeah. And so when you go to Elijah Craig, um, their visitor center that's out in, away from Louisville, um, that's not where their, their distillery is because oh, gotcha. their distillery burned down in 1996. And they bought a distillery from another company so that they could start production immediately. Um, and so they don't have all of the big fancy tours and all that stuff where they have all their aging warehouses. Mm -hmm. And so to make the, the trip out there special, they have a couple of things that they only sell at the distillery. And, uh, and, and that is one of them. Hello and welcome to today's episode of what you have on your e-commerce site. I'm your host, Randy Sullivan. Let's get right to the questions. Do you have Glen toppers? Yes. Do you have t-shirts? Yes. Do you have bottle carrying bags? Yes. Do you have storage? Yes. Do you have an aroma kit? Yes. People, we have everything at bourbonrealtalk.com. This is stupid. Why do we even need a game show? What do we have in the distillery only release category? Um, we have the Old Forester 117 series. Mm -hmm. So that's a 375. Yeah, so it's a half Super bottle. Super cute. And um, that's about 60 bucks. 60 bucks for a half bottle. Um, and this one, uh, the one that I was able to acquire when I was there not so long ago, is finished in um, Speyside Scotch casks. Shut up, that yeah. sounds fun. Yeah, so it's interesting, not really for my palate. Uh, but it was part of that flight board that included. I mean, I do like space sides. Yeah. It's the only kind of scotch I really like. Mm hmm So you might love this one. We'll Maybe. see. Um, and then what is the next distillery only? The Michter's Fort Nelson Bottle Your Own. That's another one that's uh, it's a little pricey at 180 180 um, And so this one is an interesting one. 
because typically Mictors has been rumored because they're a non-distiller producer. They contract okay. distill or they source, you know, they, they're very secretive. And um, the rumor has been that they've been getting their liquid from Brown Foreman. Okay. Uh, which would which would be like an old Forester product. Sure. Um, but the rumor now is that the current Fort Nessel, 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 Fort Nelson, Fort Nelson yep. bottle your own is actually a higher age 1792 bottle. Shut up. Um, and so we opened this bottle up mm. and we tried it next to a higher age statement 17. 92 bottle that we had mm. from I think it was cream of Kentucky. Yeah um, And they taste very very similar hmm. um, So that one was kind of interesting, but in this particular instance you get to go in You need to line up at about 9 a.m. They don't open till 10 at 10 They'll tell you whether or not they have any bottle your own opportunities There's mm. usually two time slots you buy a ticket you have to come back later in the day and um, and then they take you in the back and they have you fill your bottle and you get to fill out your own label and all that stuff and you kind of end up with your own custom whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. Super fun. Uh, what's the next one on the list? Um, William Heaven Hill. Yeah. I don't it, know anything about this. Yeah. It, this is one that I've not bought because they're, they're so expensive. Yeah. Um, I think the last one that I got offered was like $275 or $250. Mm -hmm. Um, but those are distillery only bottles and they're usually pretty high ages, but they have different releases uh, each year. And so you'll just have to go and see what the current one is. And they don't have it every day. So, you know, sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. Uh, but what's next on the list? Okay, tell me about the Jim Beam Urban Stillhouse Select. I feel like I've never even heard of this. So it's very similar to the Michter Bottle Your Own, Okay. but Jim Beam. Okay. And so they have a uh, bottle your own type experience there, uh, but theirs is a little bit more affordable at $46. Sure. Um, and that's the, the, that highlights the differences between a legacy distillery's cost and the cost of a non-distiller producer who's buying barrels from other people sure. and potentially paying barrel brokers and all of that other stuff in between. Um, but that is a really great experience that you can get in Louisville uh, at the Urban Still House, which is in Whiskey Row uh, okay. in Louisville, uh, only 46 bucks. Yeah. Um, what do we got next that's distillery only? Um, the Woodford Reserve Distillery Series. I don't think I've been to Woodford yet. You haven't? I haven't. No, so the first time that I went, the, it, the distillery series had just started, and the only thing they had was the Woodford Double Double Oat. Okay. Which actually got released through distribution earlier this year for okay. the first I think for the first time mm -hmm. um, but they have different distillery series that are experimental projects uh, depending on what it was and how old it is it has mm -hmm. different prices but they are always sold in a 375 bottle which I think are so cute yeah uh, but it's it's the shape of a Woodford bottle so it's cute yeah, um, like and they're between 30 and 60 dollars okay. but when you go on your Woodford tour you can check to see what whiskeys they have available from mm -hmm. their distillery series, which is distillery only. Yep. And then back to Heaven Hill, what have we got next? Evan Williams, 23 year, mm -hmm. $350, yeah. is that a thing? Yeah, so imagine you're Heaven Hill and you're watching Pappy Van Winkle 23 just blow up on the secondary and mm. people are like, I'll trade you my firstborn child. And you're like, we have 23 year old whiskey. And so they decided that they were gonna take some of their 23 year old whiskey and bottle it and sell it only at the distillery and it's not there every day, um, but it is $350. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they priced it that way so that there was something special that people could get when they went to the distillery sure. uh, to do the, and, and this is at the uh, Evan Williams experience that's in Louisville. Okay. Um, and, and so they figured, People will pay anything for these high age bottles sure. and they did some nice packaging and whatnot. I've had the opportunity to buy one. I passed because at 350 bucks, I have tried the bottle. Um, in my opinion, it is better than Pappy 23 because I'm not a huge fan of Pappy 23. It's just uh, over, over oaked for me. Uh, but the Evan Williams held up slightly better at that 23 year age. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, 350 bucks. If you've, if you got that kind of cash, you can have that kind of experience when you go to Kentucky. Yeah. Um, and what do we have last but not least on the list? Well, I mean, speaking of Evan Williams, mm -hmm. the um, Bourbon Experience Square Six. Yes. 90 so bucks. 
Ninety dollars. Uh, there is a kind of a separate skew that's only sold at the Evan Williams Experience location, and it is uh, called Square Six, and they have you know different products. But what a lot of people don't know is that uh, Evan Williams obviously has a huge production facility out at Heaven Hill. Mm -hmm. But at the bourbon experience, they have like a micro distillery that's set up that has the capacity to make one barrel of whiskey per day. Oh. And they use that whiskey to do a special bottling called Square Six that is only sold at the Evan Williams experience. I feel like that's super fun. Yeah, super fun. And so... um, I am not a hundred percent sure because I feel like I tried some of this when mm. I was at Evan Williams Experience last time, and I think that it might be um, pot still, but mm. I, I can't remember for sure. Uh, but I do remember the whiskey tasting different from their normal brand line products. Um, but you know, kind of a cool thing to have. Um, but yeah, so that is our list of whiskeys that you should look for if you're in Kentucky instead of trying to find Pappy Van Winkle. Because if you walk into a liquor store and say, hey, do you have any Pappy? Or even, do you have any Blanton's? You're going to get laughed at. Sure. Um, But those are things that are special that you can bring back from your trip. So what do you say we give some stuff away? We absolutely should. All right. So what I want to do on this one, obviously, I didn't have everything Everything. in the list. Uh, We've got some good ones. But I do have this. So we have Fort Nelson. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've got the Old Forester. Elijah Craig Grenade. Uh, we have Heaven Hill Six Green Label. We didn't have the 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 newest one that they released. It's sure. not age stated, um, but this one's better. And mm-hmm. then uh, JTS Brown and uh, Early Times, Early Times Bottle, Bottle and Bond. Bond. Let's do three one ounce sample ones. That's a great idea. And uh, per the use, you're going to be getting one, two, three, four, five, six ounces of whiskey. Share we, with someone. We recommend that you share that with at least one other person. Yeah, it's a good uh, that time. way. Uh, everybody can have a great experience. So all you have to do uh, to enter is to like uh, this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. And fill out the web form. Fill out the web form um, because that's how we get your contact information. Run a randomizer, post it publicly, reach out to the winner, get your address, mail your samples absolutely for free. And if you want to support the channel, how can they do that? Bro. Our Patreon, like we've spent a lot of time building our Patreon so that it was affordable um, on many different levels. We've got six different levels that you can support. Mm -hmm. There's awesome member benefits, um, member discounts, distillery takeovers, Mm -hmm. um, monthly virtual bottle shares with you, sometimes me. Yeah, we hang out. I kind of float through. Sometimes. We hang out together. We yeah. hang out in person. We take over distilleries. Yeah. We have whole Those are my favorite. Those multiple are really day fun. trips where mm-hmm. everything's curated for you and we have private tours and we eat at restaurants and, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Because we've developed a network of people in the industry and we can put some cool stuff together. So Super fun. Consider joining. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that you get is discounts on merch. Yeah. And speaking of merch. I'm super proud of our merch. Yes. So I, Lindsay I, has yeah. become very adept at... Um, me coming to her and saying, hey, there's this problem in the whiskey world and I need you to find a product that solves this problem. And then she can find somebody that can manufacture that specific thing. Sure. And so we have amazing merchandise on the bourbonrealtalk.com website. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be links for all of this in the video description yeah. below. And then uh, last but not least, if you wanted to support us, you could hire me as your residential real estate agent in the Houston or Dallas metro areas. Um, I, I practice real estate in both those areas. My real estate business has always subsidized this channel. And I do give away epic closing gift bottles sure. to those who find us through, through our, whiskey. our whiskey endeavors. Um, and so... If this is your first time tuning into the channel, we'd love to tell you a little bit about why we do what we do. We are all about bringing people together through bourbon and helping to create connection. And connection is something that has become a mission for us because I lost my brother to suicide. And I learned after his passing that he had started to lose some of the connections that keep people anchored to this world. And at the same time, I also saw how whiskey was helping to foster connections between individuals and creating, you know, a point of connection that led to deeper, more fulfilling relationships, the type that my brother was missing. And so my theory was, if I could help get you connected to whiskey, whiskey would do the rest of the job and get you connected to others. And so that's part of the reason why we started the channel. It's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community, which Mm -hmm. is a free Facebook-based whiskey enthusiast forum. We don't allow any troll behavior on there. And 
we knew we needed a troll-free environment because when you look in the enthusiast communities, especially on Facebook, you see a lot of troll-like behavior from individuals showing hate to strangers online. And so we don't have that in our community. Um, so those same people who've been showing hate online taught us we needed to start a, a forum that didn't have it. But they also taught us that if they can hate, we can love. And that's why we end every episode the same way, and that's this. If you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we love you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Cheers. I tried real hard. I would like you to keep doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, ready? <laughs> okay. She, she likes to make fun of me. Bite, Bite each, each other's, other's tongues? tongues? <laughs> so it's like, no, I'm going to lick you. No, I'm going to lick you. And I'm like, what are we doing? It's it's like it's like the thumb war. Yeah. You know, where they're like, yeah, <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. And I'm like, just stop. All right. Okay. Hope that goes in all takes. A whiskey troll is a person who seeks negative attention and uses contrarian attitudes to derail civil discussion in online forums. They communicate in ways they never would face to face because they're keyboard warriors. Their only goal is to make other people feel inferior. Hi hey guys, I'm new here. I just got my first Blanton's. And trust me, you probably paid way too much. I don't care much about the Blanton's, but nice <laughs> There's no way that she didn't buy that at secondary. Idiot. Oh, I know how you got that bottle. So, are you sick and tired of the whiskey trolls running your fun online? Well, that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. Congratulations. Let me know what you think when you open it up. Hey, welcome to the group. Let me send you over a sample of Blanton's Gold and straight from the barrel. See how you like those. I remember back to my first bottle of Blanton's. It was the birthday to my son, and we enjoy it every year on his birthday. Congrats. So if you're looking to connect with some people online who aren't head over to facebook.com and join Bourbon Real Talk community today.